Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the January 2024 International A Level in Excel Statistics S1 exam. This question here is about probability and its notation. And, you know, so in, in S1, we don't have to just understand the concept of probability in terms of, you know, it's in context of situations. We have to also understand a probability in terms of its notation and set notation, okay, as this question is, we don't have any idea of what these events are, but we have probabilities of, you know, some aspects of them, which we have to understand. So it's very important for us to understand Venn diagrams, set notation, okay, for us to be able to get the full marks for such questions. So actually, this is the beginning of the question. It says the events A and B satisfy the probability of A equals X, the probability of B equals Y, the probability of A union B equals 0 0.65, and the probability of B given A equals 0 0.3. Okay, now, we have to show that 14X plus 20Y equals 13. So we need to have to understand, we need to have an understanding of what these things mean. We could, if we want to, just look at the formula sheet and try to flaff our way through it and bluff our way through it, and uh, you might get some of the marks, actually, all right, because... You know, some of these questions, you can just look, oh, you know, without not understanding what they mean, you can say, okay, this equals that, that equals that, and so on. But it's always best, of course, to understand what they mean. All right? So the probability of, I'm going to draw a Venn diagram just to illustrate what these are about. Okay? So we have two events, A and B. So that's A and that's B. Okay? So... We know the probability of A, which is all of this, is X. The probability of B, which is all of this, is Y. The probability of A union B is 0 0.65. So that means to, together they are 0 0.65. And the probability of B given A is 0 0.3. What that means is basically the probability, here we, we're making A as our sample space. Our sample space is A. Okay, so the A is the denominator. So you can say that this is the same as something over the probability of A given A. Okay, and so we're only considering A, and we want to find the probability that B exists, okay, the, the part of B that's in A only. Okay, so we're going to find the probability of the part of B that's in A only, so we have to take this section here, which is the, the intersection of A and B, okay, because if we're looking at A as our sample space, then the probability of A intersection, the probability of B given A would be just this part here, which is the probability of B intersection A, or A intersection B, same thing. So that's what this means. The probability of B intersection A, B given A, is equal to this. Okay, so we can think of this as the probability of B intersection A over the probability of A is 0 0.3. You can think of these as the same thing, all right? And um, what we should also know is... Just get rid of this and put it back up again. What we should also know is the following. That the probability of A union B, which is the probability of all of these together, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, the problem with this is we've counted all of A and we've counted all of B. So we've counted this space twice, so we take away the probability of the intersection between A and B, what's common to them. Okay, so this is an important formula. This is an important formula, the probability of B given A is equal to this. And these two formulae are gonna help us to answer this question, right? Um, and you can find these formulae written like this in the formula sheet. And as I said, you can just use them without understanding what's going on, but I like you to understand what's going on. Okay, A union B, what's in A and in what, or in what's in B. Okay, so you count all of A and all of B, but you can't count this part twice, so you have to take it away, and that will give you what's in these two circles without any repetition. That's what that means, A or B. So now uh, we can now put some numbers to this. So if I use this first one, you have 0 0.65 is equal to the probability of A, which is X, probability of B, which is Y, minus the probability of A intersection B. Now we don't know A intersection B, okay, but we can find it. So I'm gonna write it as this for now. Now I can use this formula. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of 
B into section A, which is the same as this, A into section B, over the probability of A. Okay, now what I can do is I can rearrange this formula. I can say that the probability of B into section A, which is the same as A into section B, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And we know the probability of A is given by X, and the probability of B given A is given by 0 0.3. So this is going to be 0 0.3 times X. So now I can put them together. This is now this can be replaced by this, because they're the same. Okay, so now we can proceed and hopefully get the equation required. So we have 0 0.65 equals X plus Y minus 0 0.3 times X. Okay, which is the probability of A in section B. So we can um, deal with this. We have 0 0.65 equals X minus 0 0.3 X, which is 0 0.7 X plus Y. If we multiply everything by 100 to get rid of the decimal points, we have 65 equals 70 X plus 100 Y. Okay, and we now can get rid of the decimal divided by 5. Uh, sorry, get rid of the factor of 5 divided by 5. That gives us 65 divided by 5, which is 13, equals 70 divided by 5, which is 14. So 14x plus 100 divided by 5 is going to be 20y. Okay, and I think that's what we had to show. 14x plus 20y equals 13. Just rewrite it in that form. 14x plus 20y equals 13. So we showed what we had to show. Okay, so there's the answer. To question six, part A. Right, so it's a have to have an understanding of set notation and Venn diagrams with probability. Okay, all of this is in the formula sheet as well. So you could, you know, use that, of course. All right, but I want you to understand where these things come from also. Now, six, part B says the events B and C are mutually exclusive. Important concept here. Such that the probability of B union C is 0 0.85. And the probability of C is a half X plus Y. Find a second equation in X and Y, and then hence find the value of X and the value of Y. Okay, so the mutually exclusive part is important. What that means is that they cannot occur at the same time. So if this was B, then C would be such that there's no intersection between B and C. There's no intersection between them because, for example, I could say B are the even numbers between 1 and 10, and C are the odd numbers between 1 and 10, they are mutually exclusive. You can't have a number which is both even and odd. There's no common ground between them whatsoever. If I said B are the odd numbers and C are the prime numbers, well, there are some common numbers. There will be some intersection, like 3 and 5 and 7, for example, would be numbers which are both prime and odd. But as it, if you say even and odd, there's no numbers that are both by definition. An even number cannot be an odd number, right? And an odd number cannot be an even number. So therefore, that's an example of things which are mutually exclusive, which means that if we use our formula, the probability of B union C equals the probability of B plus the probability of C minus the probability of the intersection between them, well, there's no intersection between them. So if, if they're mutually exclusive, then the probability of B union C is going to be just the probability of B plus the probability of C without any minus intersection because intersection is zero. So we know because they're mutually exclusive, the probability of B union C is simply the probability of B plus the probability of C. And we know the probability of B union C, they've told us, is 0 0.85. And we know the probability of B, we've given, assigned it Y. And the probability of C, we know, is a half X plus Y. Okay, so we have another equation in X and Y. Let's just simplify it. This you're going to have 0 0.85 equals, that's Y plus Y, which is 2Y plus a half X, or so a half X plus 2Y. Um, let's simplify this by um, multiplying by, I guess, 100 again. If you multiply by 100, this would become 85 equals 50X plus 200Y. Again, let's divide by 5. 85 divided by 5, that goes, 5 goes into 8 one time, remainder 
um, 3, so that's going to be 17, okay, equals 10x plus, and that's going to be um, 200 divided by 5, that's going to be 40y, 40y, okay, that's right, okay, good, so we have our second equation is 10x plus 40y equals 17, 10x plus 40y equals 17, and our first equation was, we had before, okay, 14x plus 20y equals 13, okay, so we have uh, 14x plus 20y equals 13, equation 1, equation 2, so that's part 1 is what we just did now, okay, and part 2 is hence solve the equation, so what we're going to do now is solve this equation for x and y. So we can see here we could use um, elimination, we could multiply the second equation by 2, in which case we're going to get 28x plus 40y equals 26. And our first equation is 10x plus 40y equals 17. So we can subtract these two equations to get rid of the y term. So that's going to be 14y, 14x, sorry, this becomes 0 equals 26 minus so that's not 14, that's 18. 28 minus 10 is 18x. That becomes 0, and that's equal to 26 minus 17, which is 9. So that means x is equal to 9 over 18, which is a half. So we know x equals a half. And when x equals a half, we can find what y is. Um, we could use any of these equations. Uh, let's use this equation here. We know that 20y is equal to 13 minus 14x. So we have 20y is equal to 13 minus 7. Okay, so we can say y is going to be that 6, 6 over 20, which is uh, 3 over 10. So y is equal to 0 0.3. Okay, so x is equal to 0 0.5, and y is equal to 0 0.3. Those are the values of x and y. Okay, so we answered question part B. Now, C. So it tells us to determine whether or not A and B are statistically independent. You must show your working clearly. Now, I can see that there are two ways of us doing this. And um, basically, when they are independent, what we should know is that the probability of A times the probability of B will be equal to the probability of A intersection B if they are independent. Independent. Okay? So what we could do is we could work out the probability of A intersection B quite easily because we have enough information. And then we could find that, you know, is the probability of A times the probability of B the same as that? So let's do that first. Okay, we can see that the probability of A times the probability of B gives us 0 0.5 times 0 0.3, which is going to be 0 0.15. So does that give us the same value as the probability of A intersection B? Let's have a look. How do we find A intersection B? Um, well, we can find it in a couple of ways. One way is we can say that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection between a and B. So we know that this is 0 0.65, and we know that this is 0 0.5, and this is 0 0.3 minus the probability of A intersection B. So we can see here that we're going to have, um, if we rearrange this equation, okay, we'll add this to both sides, we'll have the probability of A intersection B is equal to 0 0.8 minus 0 0.65, and that gives you 0 0.15. Okay, so we can say, therefore, the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersection B. Therefore, A and B are independent. Let me just write that a bit neater. Are independent. Independent. Okay, so they are independent because of this fact. So that's one way of doing it, okay, there's also an easier way of doing it, actually, because what we should understand is that the probability of A given 
B, which is what we have. So we have the probability of B given A. We're given the probability of B given A. Okay, we're told that in the question here is equal to 0 0.3. All right, so we know the probability of B given A is the probability of B intersection A over the probability of B. Okay, uh, sorry, over the probability of A. This is the sample space over the probability of A. Now, we know if they're independent, if independent, okay, we know that this probability of B given A will be probability of B times the probability of A. And that's over the probability of A. They cancel out, and that leaves you with the probability of B. So if they're independent, if independent, then the probability of B given A will be the same as the probability of B. And we can see that in the question, that is true. Okay? And we can see that, you know, the probability of B given A is given as 0 0.3. And we found the probability of B is 0 0.3. Therefore, they are independent. So this is probably an easier way in this particular question of proving that they're independent. Okay? So if they're independent, then the same rule applies that the product of their probability is the same as their intersection, which leads us to this conclusion that the probability of B given A must be the same as the probability of B. Because these cancel out, you see? And we see that that's true, so we can also solve it from that angle. So there's two ways of proving this, um, and I hope that was clear. So that concludes this particular question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the region of the screen over here at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of um, probability and Venn diagrams and notation, you can find it in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link, and the video here will take you to, um, a, or the, the link here will take you to a video which will t t show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.